Hello and welcome back to Game of Thrones mod for Crusader Kings 2. So, this should be the second last episode with custom courtiers. Uh, because we have three here and I think there's about four or five in the next episode. So it's going to be great. Uh, we're going to just do it the absolute next episode so that we get them all out of the way. Uh, and, you know, just in the uh, behind the scenes thing. That means that I can start recording a little bit more bulkier than I usually do because I won't have this problem of having to stop for courtiers. Uh, I have better solution for the next series, but you're gonna have to wait till this one ends. So, let's have a look at our courtiers. We have uh, Marguerite Sigrid. I have no idea how to pronounce the last name. I should probably have learned, given that they control uh, all of Westeros currently. And uh, she is, um, well, she was the sister of the ruler of Westeros, um, who unfortunately died. And ha she would be the aunt of the current queen of Westeros. So she's a pretty powerful person, but she went off adventuring. She went off, you know, learning and experiencing the world, and she came upon followers of Rylor, who converted her. And she, she really, she was into Rylor. She is obsessed with Rylor, and she converted. She became a red priest, and she went out into the world. And she met a small group of Brindlemen, uh, one of which is Shamob Tling. Now. When she met them, she um, they didn't speak the same language, so they spent a while together conversing. But eventually, she, once she was able to get a proper conversation going, she convinced them of the way of the Lord of the Light. And, you know, one of them has become her bodyguard, effectively, going around making sure that no harm comes to her um, while she does her stuff. Now, why is she here? Well, she is here because we are actually at war with followers of the Lord of the Light. We are at war with Lord Theomore of Saltcliffe, who is of course a Rylor follower. So she wants to convert us, she wants to make us see the correct way of thinking, and we'll see how well she does at that. We also have J. Car Sor, who is who was a former Tyroshi slave who was released and he he, uh, he was captured by the Ironborn at that point. But they like they saw he was quite a good fighter. They wanted to use him. And he eventually got into the reaving with them. He got into, you know, taking over land with them. He became a true Ironborn with the rest of them. And he has worked his way up the ranks and is now part of our direct court. Presumably to do more reavings and such. So, let's uh, see where we're going to go next. I believe we're at war. Yes, we are at war. We have our full army raised. Uh, yes, we do. Let's go and do some stuff. So we have our dragon in the center, we have a dragon on one flank, and we have John on the other flank. Perfect. Um, do we want to just go and assault them? I mean, I think what we want to do is we want to go one province over. Okay, Regency for Lord Magister Vicon of the Iron Isles ended. Were we on a Regency last time? Not Regency, a Reaving last time. That would probably explain it. Also, can we be in charge of an army? We could. We are wounded. Probably don't want to be in charge of an army. But maybe it might be a cool idea once we become not wounded. At age 40, Storm King Gullion of the Stormlands died of gonorrhea. Um, so, he has been succeeded by Storm Queen Rowan of the Stormlands, who is in a regular marriage. And, oh, is, that, is she in a regular marriage to a gardener? Um, yeah, okay. So, the gardeners are intermarrying. Interesting. Alright. So, I guess the gardener line will continue in the Stormlands. Uh, ooh, okay, what well, are these? People owe us favors, weak claims can be pressed. Okay, no no real problems here. Apart from Manfred for the Iron Isles, which isn't really a problem. Two of your courtiers at the feast have brought a dispute before you to settle. The inheritance of some small property in Harlow Hill is unclear, and Volga and Sir Wallace Weber both claim it as theirs. It is left to you to settle who shall be the declared heir to this land. Okay. So Wallace Webber has obviously been in the area longer. He's, you know, son of Saragon, son of, son of Elman. You know, it's a long line of Webbers. It, it, it keeps going. There's a lot of Webbers. So he probably actually has a claim to whatever land it is. However, Volga, um, well, Volga is a giant. So also, what's going on here? I guess that's just a weird textured... Yeah, it's a textured glitch with giants. Interesting. I didn't notice that before. Um, but yeah. Volga is... Uh, sorry. Volga is a, is, um, a giant. 
So it's probably attempting to pressure it by, you know, force. Like, this is my land. Just kind of like, my land. To, you know. And just kind of stand there. So let's see what's happening. Uh, if I go with Volga, I gain gold. Volga becomes happy, and so Wallace becomes unhappy. Go to Wallace, so Wallace becomes happy, and Volga does not become happy. Which one do I like first? Wallace, uh, I dislike. Volga, I dislike less. Okay, that's an interesting way of looking at it. So else we've got temperate, honorable, greedy. Um, I don't know. Who would we really want to go with? I think maybe, and maybe we go in favor of the giant. As strange as it might sound, because the giant is, um, you know, probably going to cause us less trouble in the long term. If they just have the land and we get the same amount of gold. And we really don't like Wallace Weber in the first place, so. There we go. We'll go with that dispute. At age 42, High Chief Alfin of the Haunted Forest died under suspicious circumstances. Succeeded by High Chief Duncan. Uh, which one is it to... Was it Tall Talker? I think somebody from here was in our court, which is why I'm like... Maybe? Uh, maybe a sibling... I don't know. Can't seem to find them. Maybe I'm, maybe I'm making it up. Anyway, yes. He inherited the Chieftain of the Haunted Forest and other titles from Chief Alvin Crowkiller. Alright, cool. The funeral. It's been a day since Victorian passed away. The strong, uh, the strongest reavers and kin of the dead have gathered in the keep, where a drowned man is brought in to check the deceased. Then the assembled party lift up uh, the body and carry it from the keep to a waiting ship and it has sailed out into the open sea where the anchor is cast. The drowned man gathers up seawater and sprinkles it upon the dead, speaking the ancient words. With the rites completed, each member of the conclave comes together to recount memories of the deceased, the greatest reavings, major boarding actions, and many treasures paid for with the iron price. As the sun falls, the drowned man ties off the body and is cast overboard for the words, What is dead may never die, but rises again, harder and stronger. Vaterian Serpentail was slain by Thoros of Lothar Bay in personal combat on 17th of October, 8135. At age 21, he was a man who was immensely fat. That's really not a nice way to speak about someone after they're dead. Okay, and so it is done. Right. So yeah, my plan here in the war is just to siege and then take over this province, basically. It's not that complicated. Like, we'll take over the province because they have to act here. As we'll take our province quicker, because they're they're not sitting on one of our problems, like one of the provinces we want to protect, and then we can move over and do other stuff. Magister Yoko of Mir accepted Princess Symbia of Wallando's peace offer. Okay, a uh, daughter of uh, Prince Hakar Chozax. Okay, uh, and she lost. Oh well, unfortunate. A Mirish slave raid, so they probably picked up some slaves there. You and Lord Ben of Old Oak aren't exactly on the best of terms, and now it seems he has encouraged an angry mob to burn down your trade post in Old Oak. Your small garrison has been surrounded with mob threats to butcher them all unless you withdraw from Old Oak. Hmm, okay. We have no choice, dismantle the trade post, or we can offer him a bribe. We're greedy, we're temperate, but the trade post gets us so much money, I think we have to pay our bribe. We'll offer the bribe. See what he does. <coughs> Pate of the Peasant's Vault to slay the Peasant Vault on Westeros. And a son was born to Hotho, Serpentail, and Magarot named Josran. And he's a quick boy. Okay, cool. That's not too bad. Oh, we really want to be in this fight. We really want to be in this fight. Come on. Let's see if we can get there. Oh, we, we arrived. Too late to get the defensive bonus, but we do have dragons. And one of them has already broken this flank. Okay. Yes, perfect. Uh, Lord Ronnet of Harvest Hall has declared the Stormlander Civil War to increase council power on Storm Queen Roanne of Stormland. So that's 5.9 versus 3.59. So that's probably a reasonably sized revolt, given he may have other people in it. Okay, we've won the Battle of Pike. Now we're going to head back here and we're going to siege it down because it's got a really low, uh, like, pe uh, low amount of defenders left over. Right, so we'll wait here and then we'll assault. Perfect. That gets us a little bit of war score. We're then going to head back to their capital and we're going to start sieging that down with our dragons. Garrick of Driftwood Hall declared a peasant's revolt on the north. Alright. Uh, did I miss anything back here? Uh, some stuff of non-Alvarez voting. 
No, I didn't miss, here, miss anything. Okay. Cool. At age 26, Lord Paramount Andros of the Vale died in the dungeons of Iron King Lancel of the Iron Islands. Okay, that means his son, Lord Paramount Geralt of the Vale, has taken over. Geralt Linderly. And his regent is Kristen of Darkmoor. Okay. So yeah, um, our liege isn't becoming popular with people. When I introduced my friend to Hagen, I had high hopes. I'd hoped they would become fast friends so the friend of, so the three of us could become... Uh, I hoped they would become fast friends so we could spend time together. The three of us. Hagen and my friend had a great time together. So Lord Master Dale of Landsport and Hagen the Red Reaver may be friends now. Uh, they are. Cool. So we've got a kind of friendship triangle. Oh, we can assault this down. Perfect. Your Excellency, I am pleased to report I have captured some high-value prisoners after a successful siege of Salt End. I hereby turn them over to you for your judgment. Yours humbly, Gale. Send them to my dungeons. Okay. We didn't capture enough prisoners, though? Hmm. Interesting. Well, um, we probably want to fight this army. Yeah, let's go fight them. Let's take, let's take the, let's take the straight crossing. I think we can win. We do take a huge negative for straight crossing, and they take a bonus for hills. However, they've already lost the flank, and we've got a dragon, so this should be... Yeah, it's, it's ended. Cool. To the heroic Lord Magister Vicon, blessings upon you and your house. I would like to give you a seat in my council, and therefore offer you the title of Chief General. Hmm, I think we're going to accept. I think that sounds like a title we would quite enjoy. Lord Magister Vicken uh, Ironheart fulfilled the ambition to become a counsellor. Oh, I didn't know we had that. I actually forgot we had that ambition. Okay, new ambition, become regent. Mm, we don't really like our liege that much, and he doesn't really like us that much. So I don't really think this is a good way to go. Fall in love, uh, maybe. Have a daughter, maybe. Have many children. House on the Iron Throne, obtain a greater throne, adopt a lifestyle. Tain of Valyrian Sword. You know what? Tain of Valyrian Sword sounds reasonable. Let's see if that off, uh, if that opens up anything here. A little bit of an auto save, and our men are back. Right, disband. And now we can sit in peace for a little bit. Pate accepted Queen Liza of the we uh, of Westeros's peace offer. Yeah, looks like Westeros won their war. Unsurprisingly. You've been spending countless hours sketching up plans for different building projects when suddenly you realize how you could display your extraordinary architectural skills. You'll build a grand tower that will dwarf everything else in the landscape. Okay. Well, we can say that will be glorious. Or I won't be able to afford it. Um. I don't think we're going to go with that. That doesn't sound good. Okay. We'll leave it there. Let's keep going. Uh, sorry about uh, being a little bit distracted there. I heard a loud noise outside my window. Uh, it turned out it was just a skateboard, but it sounded loud. Uh, what level of education would you like to purchase for Ragnar? Ragnar is... Oh, he's our first son, and only son, and only child. Okay. Best equipment. Although we are temperate and greedy. Let's go very good. There we are. And he needs an education focus. Uh, he is really into diplomacy. Like, he is... Diplomacy King. I think we go Diplomatic Education. And then we find him an Educator who will fit. So, looking for high on Education. We could send him away as well if we want, because we're not, we don't, we're not paranoid or anything, right? No, we're not paranoid. Uh, well, well let's, let's look and, let's use fine characters. Let's find a suitable person. Um, we don't really care what gender they are. We just want high Diplomacy. My religion group, I think. Yeah. Doesn't necessarily have to be my culture, but my religion at the very least. Um, oh, that's the wrong one. Diplomacy, yep. Uh, not in prison. Uh, married can be either. Ruler can be either. Great house can be either. Adult has to be yes. There we go. So we've got Harma, who is a random courtier in Naga Hill, who doesn't seem great. Rudo, uh, Prince Rudo, who is uh, married to Princess Simba, uh, Simbaya of Wolando, who was had to have someone who was previously in our court. That, that seems reasonable. How about we send, um, let's see if he will educate our son. We'll send him away for a little bit. He can experience the world. 
Uh, Rudo. Rudo. Uh, is he already educating two people? Yes, he is. Okay. Um, how about Miram's Bar of Horus Town? And uh, nah, he doesn't seem as good. But mainly because um, doesn't seem like he's directly related to anyone else. Okay. Torwald, Master of Arms of the Great Garden. No. Hammer, good brother, is in the good brother court. Uh, it's other. It's in the Westlands though. Maybe not. Meredith Benson, married to Harlan Pike, who is our kinsman. Uh, she seems reasonable. Yes, you will educate our son. There we go. Ragnar will be educated by Meredith. Meredith. There we go. Yes, he'll be happy. Everyone's happy. Good. See how it goes. My courtier, Jacar Sor, has expressed a desire to get married and has asked for my permission to find a suitable spouse. You can marry as you please. Who did he choose? He chose Rhonda. Okay. Um, interesting. My liege, placing this upon you and your house, I'd gladly accept the guardianship contract between Ragnar and Meredith. Okay, cool. So Ragnar is being educated in Lannisport by somebody else. That works. It's uh, just something for him to do. Winifred Serpentail complains he was sold a fake Valyrian steel sword. Hmm. Okay, Winifred Serpentail, a 14 year old, uh, a daughter of our half brother, so this make her a niece. Yep. Um, we can force the offender to pay back, or we can mock her. Okay, so who's the offender? The offender would be Shereel Serpentail. Oh, our half sister. Our half-sister um, tricked our niece. Okay. Uh, we kind of like her, and we do don't like our niece as much. Okay. Um, or we can. Are we likely to mock someone though? Um, maybe a little bit of cynical bit could give us some uh, mocking there. Like, oh my god, how would you, how did you believe that was a thing? You know what? We'll do that. We'll mock her. Let's see what happens. Uh, some more money came in. Good. I want to check, take a quick look at the trade zones. I just want to see what's happening with them. Okay, so we don't have any trade zones still. Okay, I'm just trying to... I, I'm not entirely sure how they work, so I want to see. Margot has dragged her unfaithful spouse, Hotho, before me and insists I should punish him. Hotho, Serpentail, our kinsman. We like him. We don't like Margot as much. Um, we're not justice-focused, so this is a waste of my time. Yep. Definitely a waste of my time. Date 63, Iron King Lancel of the Iron Isles died a natural death. He has been succeeded by Iron King Roland of the Iron Isles. Okay. Still holds Castle Rock. Um, alright. Interesting. Uh, your prisoner, Unella, has requested an audience with you. Upon meeting with her before the court, you hear she is offering to pay the ransom for her release personally. Oh, I accept your offer. Uh, I actually forgot about that. That you were even in my prison. Uh, we do have some other people here, though. Um, nobody is like of a suitable age. Enter the slave trade. Hmm. No, I don't. I don't think so. Not. Not just yet. Let's uh, ransom all of our prisoners. See if anybody will have a ransom for themselves. Okay. Just spam me with events. Uh, I'm ignoring all of you. I just want to see. No. Okay. So we got none of them came back. If anything. Request council support has been received from Harlan of Bullshead. To the way to the Rye Reaver, Vicken. Blessings upon you and your house. Please support me by voting with me in the council. If you agree to do this for me, I will henceforth owe you a favour. Sir Harlan of Bullshead. Okay. He is Hand of the King of the Iron Isles. We're gonna accept it. A message about invite to plot has been received from Hagen Greensmith. Dear nephew, peace be with you. We would like you to back our plot to fabricate a claim on the kingdom of the Iron Isles. So you want to fabricate a claim for yourself to be on the Iron Isles? Interesting. Interesting. Um... I don't know. We're a bit, we're, we are honourable. Um... So I don't know if we'd be quite that sneaky. I was accepting the previous one because it was a favour. And the favour is like ties into the kind of greedy nature, you know. It's not that bad. We had no real reason not to vote with them. You know, we had no uh, we had no horse in the race until they offered us the favor. 
Hagen, on the other hand, um, I don't think we want to press him onto the Iron Throne. We actually dislike him. We actually dislike him a reasonable amount. Um, yeah. So I think we're gonna, I think we're gonna leave it. Yeah. This line. All right. So we have a favor, and we will figure out what to do with that. Chief Des Lyra of Winter's Keep has said as declared the Winter's Keep War for Lord uh, Chief Joseph's claim on Haunted Forest and High Chief Duncan of the Haunted Forest. Okay, interesting. And Garrick accepted the North's peace offer. The Peasants' Revolt is over. We're going to wait till the end of the year so that we can have an auto save, and then I think we'll wrap this up. Roland Lannister bought a favor from Willem. More favors. Uh, he called in the favor on Willem. Okay. And it's the. Uh, here's the auto save. Dear Lord Magister Vicken Ironheart, I hereby invite you to the Grand Feast in Castle Rock. Your presence at the feast will be greatly appreciated. I look forward to your attendance. Um, I think we'll attend, right? Mm, yeah, we'll attend. The wall is under assault, and the Night's Watch is hard pressed to defend it. They have called upon all lords of the realm to take up arms and aid them in defending the realm against the dangers beyond the wall. No, we're not going to do that. Cost us money. Okay, I was just going one day into the future so that we weren't uh, saving on the auto save day. And I'm going to end the episode. Wait, why are we in this war? Oh, our liege is in this war. We could have joined it directly, but our liege joined it. Okay. Um. Right, I'm going to end the episode here. Thank you for watching, and I will see you next time. Goodbye.